So, the world has a few problems right now, including climate change. We've all heard of it, we all know what it is, I'm not gonna doom and gloom about the situation. But if we're gonna beat it, it's gonna need a change in the way that we do things. It's gonna require some proper disruptive innovation in technology. Which is why I'm really excited that this episode is sponsored by some champions of innovation, KiwiCo whose experts create science and engineering projects that help innovation and creative thinking thrive. But more on that in a little bit. All right, so renewable energy generation is growing each year, and it currently accounts for a third of global electricity production. And at this rate, it's just gonna keep on increasing. And when it comes to this, wind is a powerful tool. In fact, there are even wind turbines out there that stand at half the height of London's shard that can power an average household for an entire day with just one full rotation of its blades. And there's an even bigger one that's in production, which I'm actually gonna do an episode about really soon. So make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss it when that video drops. All right, so wind energy is already kind of a big deal, but a new technology that gets me really excited might be about to push that to the next level. Giant floating offshore wind farms. That's right, turbines that stand hundreds of meters tall floating in giant formations. But before we get into them, let's take a quick look at how wind turbines actually do what they do. And to do that, you're gonna need to join me down here on the floor because inside this box from KiwiCo is everything that I need to put together and wire up a hand crank flashlight, which I think is gonna work pretty well to help me show you the general idea of what's happening inside of a wind turbine. So just give me a second so I can put a bit of it together. So just like this simple circuit and mechanism here, wind turbines turn kinetic energy into electrical energy. Inside the turbine, kinetic energy turns a shaft, which turns a series of gears that spin a post inside a generator. This post has magnets attached to it, and it's surrounded by coils of conductive wire. When the magnets turn inside these coils, the magnetic fields induce an electric current to flow through them due to electromagnetic induction. And then from here, the generated electricity is distributed into the grid and supplied to like households and businesses for our daily use. The big difference is that instead of kinetic energy from me turning the crank, it's kinetic energy from wind. Okay, that's easy enough to understand, right? So up until now, there's basically just been two main types of wind turbine, onshore and offshore. Pretty simple, the onshore turbines are the ones you might see covering fields and the offshore turbines you can see in the ocean, usually from like a beach or something. But the thing with offshore turbines is that they're really not too far out to sea, seeing as they rely on being directly fixed to the ocean floor. So they're limited to some pretty shallow depths of up to around 60 meters on things like continental shelves. But floating wind turbines are different and they are changing the game. There's a range of different concepts for floating wind turbines with around four main types, but they all consist of basically the same components. A platform floating at the surface, the turbine itself, and huge cables that anchor the whole thing to the ocean floor. And the two most proven at the moment are the spar buoy and the semi-submersible types, both of which use massive ballasts to keep themselves stable, capable of withstanding hurricane force swells. All right, but why? What are the actual benefits of these systems? Well, there's kind of a lot actually, including reduced destruction and impact to marine ecosystems, due to things like the floating turbines being able to be completely constructed, or at least almost completely constructed, on shore, and then simply just moved into place out at sea, away from like ecologically rich coastal areas. And also due to the fact that it's just a few cables that are actually attached to the ocean floor. But the biggest benefit is power a lot more power. You see, further from shore, wind can blow stronger and more consistently. This is because the ocean is essentially a big smooth surface with no obstructions for wind. Unlike onshore and nearshore areas where the wind has to compete with friction from different terrain and structures that slow it down. And floating wind turbines can take advantage of these stronger winds that are over these deeper waters. Stronger winds means increased torque, which means more rotation of the generator shaft, which means more electricity is being generated, just like this torch. 
And because of all of this, it's thought that these deeper waters could hold 80% of the world's potential wind energy resources. And with the use of these floating wind turbines, offshore wind actually has the potential to generate more than 420,000 terawatt hours of electricity per year. And that's more than 18 times the global electricity demand today. And what's really cool is that there are already some functioning floating wind farms, which have proven themselves to actually be more efficient than some traditional offshore wind farms, like High Wind Scotland, for example, which has been up and running off the coast of Scotland for a few years now. It consists of five six megawatt turbines, which is currently around the average size of offshore turbines, and it can generate enough electricity to power over 20,000 homes. And just this year, the wind float Atlantic farm of three eight megawatt turbines got up and running just off the coast of Portugal. And these are just the beginning. There are already dozens of projects in the works around Europe, and there are even more around the world. But keep in mind, this is still a new technology and improvements to the systems are bound to be made alongside more testing and pushing the boundaries of what's really possible. But overall, the future is looking bright for wind power. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video that I am editing right now. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to KiwiCo who made this whole video possible. Now KiwiCo are seriously great. Their experts create monthly crates that help people of all ages get into science, technology, engineering, art and maths, also known as STEAM, in a really engaging and hands-on way. And what's great is that KiwiCo have hooked us up. If you use the link that's down in the notes below or if you head to kiwico.com forward slash aspect science, you can get your first month for free which is pretty great. Something that I really love is that their guidebook teaches you all of the concepts and explains what's going on along the way. So for someone like me who has always sucked at electronics, I learned a massive amount and then instantly got to experience it practically. <laughs> nice, I did it. So I really wish that I had KiwiCo when I was a kid. They make a massive range of boxes, so no matter what your age is, you're going to find something that is perfect for you. So use the link below or head to kiwico.com forward slash aspect science and take a look at what they've got to offer. And with that, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you are subscribed if you're not already. And until next time, you keep discovering the world around you and I'll see you then.